insurmountable problems. What were the problems? He said, then I said, I will not mention, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But, ah, but, it means this thing is not going to end well. This is my plan. This is my agenda. But, his word was in my heart as a burning fire shot up in my bones and I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. You know what that means? <laughs> the man actually made attempt. So when he said, I will not make mention of his name, I will not speak anymore in his name. He said, but the problem was that word that God said, see, this day I put my word, that word was in my heart like fire, burning fire, shot up inside my bones, right? So that I was weary with forbearing. You know what it means to forbear? To forbear means to hold back, to endure, to hold it back. So when I stopped speaking in his name and making mention of his, of his, and making mention of his name, the word of God that was inside me, it was like fire that it became easier to continue speaking than to not speak. Because the word that was in my heart, it was like fire shot up in my bone. I was weary with forbearing. I was tired of holding it back. And eventually he said, and I could not, I couldn't stay. That is a compelling impetus of the word of God. Is a kind of thing I'm trusting the Lord will happen to you. Because that is how we set the land on fire. That is how we fill the land with our doctrine. It, something that even you, you have lost control over. The, the word of God, that you have, you have taken it in so much that it has become an edifice, a structure on your inside that something has been erected in your vessel that has a life of its own. And that life is in touch with the life of God that is in the heavens. You have now become a mobile facility for the display of the splendid and assorted manifold blessedness of the word of God. God, that even when you try you cannot try for too long I was weary I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay I know you may not believe it but you see there is if, if there is a certain leave or break or vacation that I cannot take I'll fall sick Everybody say, hey, you have to slow down, you have to slow down. And it is true. We do have to slow down. But they say a limit to which we can slow down. This, this thing, because this is what I'm called to do, this thing gives me life. Gives me life. Huh? It, even on, on those days, it, you see, even malaria respects this thing. I've, I've come into a meeting shivering where did I come from that time? I think I probably actually just left the UK. I arrived at Buja. I was, malaria was heavy. And I was supposed to preach somewhere in the east, in Nigeria. I flew to the place. I'm now making calls frantically that night to see if I knew anybody in the region that could come help me. Because I didn't know how I was going to be at that meeting that night. I was shivering with high fever. Like, like that. I was literally vibrating. I managed myself. The headache was so terrible that there was a particular angle at which I can only have relief. I don't know if you know that kind of headache. Like if you turn your head, the slightest angle, the pain will just increase. So I have to keep my head at the angulated at a particular angle of relief. And then I walked into the car. They drove to the meeting and I stepped out. And I walk like that with my head held at the identified angle of relief. <laughs> and I sat there. I'm like, Jesus, what will I do today? Until I held this. 
when I got upstate, I still kept my head at that place and got upstate and held this microphone. In less than three minutes, the fever was gone. Huh? And I preached, Ew. I preached with the anger of the fever. <laughs> That's not the end of the story. After I finished preaching, and I dropped the microphone. As soon as I came and sat back, the fever said, as we were saying before. <laughs> the, the fever came back and said, as we were saying before your assignment. He took God. He took God. I, I couldn't stay to the end of the service. As soon as I was done, I tapped somebody. I said, I need to go. I need to go. I now found the angle again. into the vehicle and then they drove me to my hotel room when i hit the bed that night i woke up around 3 a.m to take off my shoes i'm saying to you that even high fever respects this thing there, there, there is a level of consumption that you are consumed and you will not be able to forbear. It's not that you will not try. You can try. You will be weary with forbearing. You eventually realize that it will be better for you to just obey than to not obey because the relief you seek from disobeying is not available. Whatever trouble Jeremiah thought he was going through, the reproach that he talked about daily, huh? And the strifes of men, the fact that he had become a public reproach, enemy number one of the public, he said that that was the more bearable than not speaking the word that had been given to him. Only God is capable of doing such a thing to a man. And we are trusting the Lord that that dimension of the superiority of the word of God, we come back into our territory again. That you'll be so consumed with the word of God that it, your life will be a continual act and exercise of the dispensing of the word of God into your territory. Imagine if we now form a word cloud in this land. That people will need to be tiptoeing to say, you just don't, so that you will not bump into the first field of that their thing. Because if you are not careful, once you enter into its circumference of influence, you are gone. Because, come, you have this lady, the word, the word, the influence of the word, it has a circumference of impact around her. Another person is here. There's another circumference of impact around her. So you have to be careful how you walk because something you will enter into the shadow of something that you did not know was there. And when you came into the influence, the first field of that which she carries on her inside, you will suddenly start to have thoughts of God. You will just sleep that night and you won't be able to sleep anymore. And you say, oh, no, no, what are we living for? And even the, the songs you heard in a bar will start preaching the gospel to you. And then you will now look for somebody and say, can you explain more to me the way of salvation? They, I've been having dreams in the night. It was simply because the person was not careful how they walk. They stepped into the first field of a daughter of Zion. The word filling the land with our doctrine they say you have filled jerusalem with your doctrine it enraged the leaders of the land of the time and god again god again must give to us the totems of grace the totems of his word so that the land can profusely be populated with the fragrances of the word of our god glorious things are spoken of you O king's daughter it is our lord it's our portion 
to take the gospel of the kingdom of God to the ends of the earth unto the end that men might know that there is a God in heaven. He is still alive and kicking today as he did 2,000 years ago when Jesus walked the streets of Palestine. That the word of the Lord is not dead. That the word of the Lord is alive in our midst. That the word of the Lord can heal the sick. That the word of the Lord can change economies. That the word of the Lord can revive cultures. That the word of the Lord can bring life where there's nothing but death the entrance of your word it giveth light it giveth understanding unto the simple the bible says then open he their understanding that they might understand the word this morning you want to say oh god where is my allocation in the word Where is my allocation in the word? Where is my allocation in the word? I have seen mighty men that manage to become mighty and wordless. I've seen a few that when you come close to them, you feel you feel the strength, you feel the strength. Of certain strides that they had made in the spirit but somehow they managed it is a mystery to me somehow they managed to be that mighty and worthless you will feel the weight but it will have no shape because it is a word of God that gives direction and shape to the power of God the thing that we secure when we pray, it is by the word of God that we give it shape. By faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made by things which do appear. I'm saying to you, people of God, that whatever we do, we cannot, we cannot do much without the word. When God was going to create the universe, the Bible says, and God said, let there be light. The power to create was available, but it is the word of God that gives direction to the power of God. What will the power of God do? It will be dependent on what the word of God says. So when you are building people in the doctrine of Christ, in the word of God, and discipleship is effective because we are applying the power of God via the word of God to the lives of people. So when we are telling them that this is the demand of the spirit of God, we are not saying that as empty words. It is the power of God we are trying to channel into the people. But we need to give it direction. We need to give it a focus. What is this power supposed to do in your life? we capture it in words so when a man has a certain weight in god and they are wordless is such is such a disservice to the economy of the gospel of jesus christ such a disservice and there's something that is called the entrance of his word the psalmist says the entrance of your word it gives light it gives understanding unto the simple sir the word of god has entrance and if it is not opened you are not going anywhere you, you can read your bible cover to cover and not enter inside you can read the bible genesis to revelation and not have one encounter with the word of God. If you ever met the word of God, it was because it opened. It opened. It opened. And there'll be times I'm reading my Bible. There'll be times I actually, some of you this morning, the things that will happen are things I cannot describe, and there'll be no need because they will happen. Some of you, God will assign you a navigator. It will be your teacher in the spirit. It's an economy of the workings of the grace of God. That, that I, I remember the day, I remember the day that my, my current experience with my navigator began. We were in a prayer meeting. And suddenly in a vision I saw, I saw myself on a boat in a little river. And there was a man that was paddling that boat. 
I couldn't see his face. He had a heart on his head. And I sat behind him. And he said, this is the river of the word of God. And I am your navigator. And he kept going and going and going and going. And I, when, when I'm studying scripture and the spirit comes, there's no end to it. When I am preaching the word and I cite my navigator, we can go for nine hours because there is no end to that river. And I'm saying to you, the word of the Lord will come to you. It's a good time to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. The entrance of your word. Because we will fill this land with the doctrine of our God. 